show you how to bevel the edges of a plexiglass plate in preparation for creating a dry point. So depending on the type of plexi that you get, it might be a thin piece of plastic that has to be peeled off first. Um, in this case, there's these two kind of sheets of paper on top. So you're gonna wanna take this off. This is protecting the surface of your plate. And you'll wanna take this off first. Should come off in one smooth piece. All right, it's free. So now you can decide what's your front and what's your back, doesn't matter. Both sides were equally protected by the um, backing. Um, we're gonna use a couple different tools today. This is a bastard file um, with a crisscross pattern. Um, this is gonna help you remove a lot of material um, and we're going to be beveling the edges to about like a 45 degree angle. So you'll need to take a lot of material off first and then we're going to refine the edge. This is another file that has uh, the lines going in one direction. This is a little bit finer so it's going to help us. Um, this is going to leave a lot of kind of teeth behind in the plastic and this is going to help us smooth it out. This is a tool that was kind of designed as a, <laughs> a cheater tool um, to help people remove a lot of material very quickly. Um, I don't use it on its own. I use it in combination with these other tools. But it's good for getting a nice flat edge. This is a scraper. It has very sharp edges, so be careful. And this is a burnisher, and it is very smooth. So we're going to start with the larger file. And I'm going to push my plate to the edge of a surface of your desk or a table. Um, and I'm going to hold it down with my left hand because I'm right handed. So depending on what uh, hand you are, you'll stand differently. Um, you can also um, use clamps to hold this in place, but I find I get along just fine without them and just holding it down and then there's less setup. Um, so you're going to start, I'm holding my file like this, holding it at about a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to drag it along the plate. And you can move um, in an up and downwards direction all along that edge of the plate going to make a lot of really annoying noise. And just be careful to not scratch the surface of your plate as you're doing it. So with this first pass, I've taken off just the top edge here. Um, so that's good. We're, we're moving along, but we want to make sure that we get all the way to that bottom edge so that there's this nice 45 degree angle. And the reason we're beveling our plates is so that when we run our plates through the press with our paper and blankets, that we're not going to cut into the blankets. So we got a lot more work to do on this side. And you can round the corners so that they don't stick you and keep on going. And I'm, I'll be changing the angle of the file as I go um, to take off a little bit more material um, towards the inside of the plate and then to um, make the angle a little bit steeper. <laughs> Thank you. 
If you want, you can try to remove a little bit more material with this tool. Um, it takes the plastic off in a nice um, curlicue. But I do feel like it sometimes leaves weird marks in the plexi. But it does remove a lot of material very quickly. So I like to switch back and forth between the two tools, smooth out those weird marks. That the other tool made. And I'm kind of rounding out this edge. We're getting there, we're getting there. to get a nice rounded edge um, and I feel like that looks pretty good to me you can always bring it up to me you can see my corner is rounded um, if you're not sure but now we need to refine the edge because we when we're inking up our plate we don't want ink to get caught in the grooves of the plate if it's not completely smooth so we can go at it a little bit with this finer file. Take out some of those TV areas. And then you could go at it again with this, but I, again, I don't like the marks that it leaves in the plastic. So I'm gonna move on to the scraper. And the scraper is going to help me get out some of those teeth-like marks in the uh, edge of the plate that were left by the file. Um, so I hold my scraper with my thumb on top and my other fingers wrapped around the bottom so that one of these straight edges is at the bottom. And then again, I'm holding my plate, holding that sharp edge against the edge of the plate like this, and then dragging it along. And this is gonna smooth out the edge of the plate. And then the last touch is to use the burnisher. And again, you're gonna hold it in a similar way, thumb on top and other fingers wrapped around underneath. Hold that edge with the like hook part along the edge of your plate. Just rub it back and forth and that's gonna shine it up really nice so that it'll be a lot easier to clean the edges of our plate when we're printing. Voila. So that's one edge, and now we have three more to do in exactly the same way. And then you'll be ready to um, start scribing on your plate using your drawing as a reference. When you've finished beveling the edges of your plate, you're ready to get your image ready um, to start scribing on the plate. Now, depending on 
um, your image, everything that you scribe onto this plate is going to print in reverse. So you'll want to think about, you know, are you happy with how your image will look in reverse? Um, you can hold it up to a mirror to see what it will look like. Sometimes when we draw something and look at it in reverse, there can be parts of it that look awkward. If that's the case, then you might want to scan your image in, manipulate it in Photoshop to reverse it, print it out and use it, or you can use the light table. So the light table switch is just underneath. There we go. And what you'll do is flip your paper over. So I already did this for a demo. Um, flip your paper over and start to trace the general lines that you'll need to transfer to your plate. All right, so when you've transferred most of the lines that you'll need, you don't need the light table on, um, but you'll Line your image up where you want your drawing to be on your plate. And you'll tape it down. This is going to help you when you're scribing so that your image doesn't move around on you. You could also just use a piece of um, transfer paper to trace your image, and then that way you'll be able to see what it looks like on either side. So if I want it to print this way, I'm going to have to scribe it onto my plate this way. And again, centering it onto my plate and then taping it down. All right, so now you're ready to start scribing. Um, and again, the harder that you push and scratch, the darker that the line is going to be. And I encourage you to try and get these darker lines because otherwise you're just going to get this really light, um, soft image and it won't be like nice and saturated. Um, but if there are areas of the plate, like say in these parts where her hair is, um, I might want to um, go a little bit lighter to show that, you know, this is the outline and then these are the smaller hairs. Um, and so I'm using this scribe. It has a very sharp end, so be careful. Um, and I'm just going to trace over my drawing. It's very convenient because I can see through my plate. Um, and so you don't actually need the light table. I'm just working here because it's convenient. And after a while, your hand is really going to start to hurt. If you want to create areas of value, you're going to have to, um, make a series of hatched or cross-hatched lines to, to make a really dark gray area. You can also use the stippling technique to create areas of value. And if at any point you wanna see 
what you've scribed onto your plate. You can put your plate on a, a dark surface or put a piece of block paper underneath and then you're going to be able to see how your image is coming. And if you need to make any adjustments. And again, this is kind of labor intensive, but it's also kind of meditative. You can put a podcast on, listen to some music and just get lost in the scratching of these very fine lines. You can get creative with the types of tools that you're using. If you also want to experiment with getting areas of gray, you can scratch your plate with a bit of sandpaper. Um, you can use different tools that you find out around the house to get different types of marks. Or you can just use the scribe. It's up to you. And you're just going to keep going with this until you've transferred your entire image and then you'll be ready to print. Mm -hmm.